because I need to make sure it fits for my lifestyle. Let me know. But honey, it is money. Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR, and I want to talk all about total rewards, aka benefits. Benefits is super duper important in any organization. A lot of times you may notice that benefits aren't really offered as much when you have 50 or less employees, but when it's a company that's over 50 employees, the bigger the company, I must admit, the better the benefits. Benefits are super duper important because people take them as a joke and like, really don't worry about them because they just, I, I personally feel like in the US we already get so used to having having benefits but benefits really play back into your pocket a lot and so me before I accept a job I typically want to know what those benefits are like and that's mainly a big part in my negotiating strategy whenever I want to like ask for more money so if you guys want to know all about benefits then definitely keep watching So if you notice, I use a term called total rewards. Total rewards means not just your benefits, but your entire compensation package. And your compensation package really has such an impact on your benefits that I prefer to look at the total rewards package than just seeing my benefits. Like what all do I get? What all can I choose from? What all do you have available for me? So your compensation is just your salary. It's your paycheck, payroll. It is payment to an employee in exchange for their service a labor, AKA wages. So that's just what your compensation is. This is what your paycheck is every, if you get paid monthly, if you get paid bi-weekly, if you get paid two times per month, if you get paid weekly. In some cases now, if you get paid daily, but however often you get paid is when that company decides to pay you for the work that you've done. Now, some benefits, they're really kind of two tiers of benefits. And ever since President Obama, really came up with the Affordable Care Act, then there's some benefits that's just a non-negotiable these days. And I absolutely love that. When it originally came out, I thought it was just so much going on with benefits. I was like, why are we making all these changes? Because there's so many changes. But I like it now because as long as you're working on average 30 hours or more in the U.S. on a weekly basis, then you have to get at least the basic benefits. And those basic benefits is primarily your medical care. So it doesn't include your, like your vision or your dental, but you have to get medical insurance. So most companies now have decided, okay, we're going to always offer medical, dental, vision, short-term disability insurance, long-term disability insurance, and life insurance. And so that's kind of what is generally your basics. When you get to a company and don't have those basics, I would be a little alarmed because obviously they should be giving you medical if you're working 40 hours or more and they have over 50 employees. For dental, I mean, that really could feed into your medical. If you keep ignoring it, it could cause health issues later. Vision, that's totally up in the air. Some people never have vision issues, so it's no big deal. Me, your girl, she need vision benefits. Now, short-term and long-term disability, people may ignore those, but short-term disability is really, really good because it comes in handy whenever you have a baby, if that's you or your spouse. It comes in handy if you have to have a surgery. It comes in handy if you have an unexpected sickness and you need to be out of work for a while. So what it'll do is say, okay, after this period of time, and for some companies or most companies, this is after being out of work for like seven days, three days, whatever. So if you're out of work for that period of time, then they look at, okay, you really on some short-term disability case. Now the company is not going to do this voluntarily almost every single time, I don't know about any time, that you don't have to submit paperwork for it. So always contact your human resources department. But you'll submit that paperwork and what will happen is you'll get paid a portion of your income, if not all of your income, while you're out on this medical leave. Now let's say it goes past 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, because most times your short-term disability starts like after three to seven days of being out of work and it extends all the way up to like sometimes 190 days, 160 days, whatever. So if you go out all this time and you're still on short-term disability, then obviously you need long-term disability. So then it'll kind of roll into this case where you're constantly getting a check from this employer until or that employer's insurance company until you recover. Most times by the time you get to long-term disability, there is no recovery. So that check continues until you get like state benefits or whatever. And sometimes it doesn't cut off then either. I like life insurance because life insurance is just an extra security. It's not used often at all, but it's nice to know that it's there. It's like a safety net. Now let's get into some of our like traditional benefits that we don't really as an employee equate to money. 
but honey it is money like your paid time off if you don't have a company that's giving you paid time off then that means your child could be sick you could have a headache you might be sick and you don't get paid that day sucks right so that really equates into money because you can just say you know any company will say this person gets paid this per hour we give them this number to use per year and so that equals x number of dollars so paid time off is super duper important holiday time off and let me go back to paid time off for just a second because people be like oh yeah they give pto you want to know how many hours of pto they give because some companies will say they give pto and they give you like 20 hours to use per year that happened to me at a company and i was just like honey i ain't even want to use pto but what am i going to do with 20 hours like <laughs> if i need to be out of work for short-term disability I probably am going to need at least 40 hours before short-term disability hits in. So most companies should give at least enough to get you into that short-term disability space. That's just my professional opinion. And this is why I always look at benefits before I accept a job because I want to see how much time are you paying me to be off if I'm just like sick or I just need to be off. Does that get me out to short-term disability time? Because let's say I had a baby, I had a surgery or whatever. I want to take off PTO then go on a short term disability. This whole time I never miss a paycheck, right? Okay, cool. And then you get holiday time off. So people would think, oh yeah, 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 yeah. They give holiday time off. Some companies literally give four holidays per year. Some companies give 18, 21 holidays days per year. Some company gives you specific holidays to use per year. Some companies will allow you to use it flexibly on whatever holidays you want. What I always look for personally is I always look for a company that's going to at least give me federal holidays off. Now, I look at federal holidays, but to be honest with you, personally, ever since I've been a mother, which uh, my daughter's 19, so when she was in school, I absolutely hated trying to figure out what to do with her during the holidays if she didn't go to her dad. So even if she didn't go to her dad, I definitely want to be home with her. If she does go to her dad, can I get some time off? <laughs> so, I mean, when she went to her dad, it was no big deal. But when she wasn't going to her dad, then it became a time where I always had to find like childcare or figure something out. And so I just started saying, okay, I need a company that's going to give me same time off that my child gets off. Now, how I make up for that is I'll say, okay, cool. You're going to get me off Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving. Cool. Because my daughter get the day off before off with school. So I normally would take off the day before Thanksgiving. So I'm going to use PTO for that. And I'm using the company holidays. So Christmas time. I'm going to take off Christmas because the company's closed for Christmas. The company's going to be closed for Christmas Eve. So I have those two days off. And then I know the company's going to be closed again New Year's Day. So I normally save my PTO. So I'm going to take off Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, PTO the rest, on straight on to New Year's. So that's just me personally. That's how I try to see if this company's going to work for me. Like, will your time off? your holidays look like because I need to make sure it fits for my lifestyle. Another thing is a company can give bereavement time off. Some companies only going to give you the day of the funeral. Some companies going to give you two days. Some, some companies going to give you five days. Some companies going to give you 10 days. Pay attention to see what that looks like because it might not be a big deal because you have an experience of death. But the minute your mama passed, your daddy passed, your child passed, it's going to become a big deal. So always make it a big deal so you never have to worry about it when that time comes. And then pay jury time. Most companies do give paid jury time these days. Like, they don't really floss it out there and make it a big thing, but they give it. You normally get paid from jury duty too, so it's kind of a double win. It's so painstaking, it should be a double win. But look at paid jury time too, so that's always good. Now, there's some second level benefits that people tend to not really pay attention to because all companies don't offer them. And so the ones that I went over are kind of your traditional ones, but you also have some second level benefits like bonuses or commissions employee stock purchases or retirement contributions. Now for me, retirement contributions isn't second level. For me, that's the first level. I need to see how much is this company paying into my retirement? How quick are they paying it? What's their max that they're matching me? And when do I get vested? Vested means if I leave the company, do I take 25% of what they gave, 75% of what they gave, 50% of what they gave, or 100% of what they gave? Am I walking away with just the money I put in retirement or the money they put in with me? And I always want to see what they max out to. So I always like when a company maxes out at 5 or 6%. Whatever they max out to, I know that I'm going to add, that's going to be my minimum. So if they max out at 2%, 3%, 5%, I'm going to put in a minimum 2, 3, 5%. So I can take all the money that they're giving and then I can start adding on more after that, right? After I kind of get used to that paycheck. Other benefits you can get is like fitness or wellness reimbursements so if you pay for like gym memberships if you pay for gym classes things like that some companies will give you like 
different counseling apps that you can use at no cost due to the company. So you can get like things to remind you how to meditate, to remind you how to focus, to remind you how to keep a home work life balance. Some other things you can get is like a cell phone reimbursement, maybe your internet reimbursement. So you go ahead and you pay the bill, you submit it to the company, they pay you back. Or maybe they might give you like a stipend where every month you get a certain amount that's allocated to your phone bill, to your internet bill, to gas or travel, all kinds of things. So benefits are really getting really wide open and I'm just loving it. I'm loving to see the benefits and total rewards just grow. I think too many companies always stay focused on what was needed by state or federal pay requirements. And honestly, in my opinion, your total rewards package should be more than just the basic of whatever you're trying to make sure you don't get sued for. The state and federal pay requirements does protect employees from bad employment practices that could negatively affect their paycheck. States require paying at least minimum wage. So every state kind of has their own different minimum wage. And most companies, all companies are going to offer you at least that minimum wage. And there's also FLSA requirements that companies have to pay attention to for like overtime or classifying employee if they're exempt or non-exempt. And so it provides great guidelines for those classifications. And so you always want to make sure that your position aligns to at least what those federal or state regulations are as well. So if y'all are new to this channel, I really, really hope that you found enough value in this video to subscribe to my channel. For those of you who are returning, I'm so happy for you coming back. Please tell me, was this a good video? Did you enjoy it? Was it helpful? Let me know. I like talking about benefits because honey, anything where they're going to get me back for all of my hard work, I'm here for it. <laughs> Anyhow, I cannot wait to see y'all on the next video.